Welcome back to another video in the series of how to build your own off-road expedition trailer. In the last video, we talked about the basics of building the body, bonding the floor in, um, assembling the sides, how the structural channels in the corners, the extrusions hold everything together, and how the sleeping platform contributes to the strength of the whole build. In this video, we're going to be looking at sealing the doors and swinging the doors, the systems I've used and how it's all going to work together to form a cohesive structure. Building with EPS foam is simplicity in itself. You just slide the panels into the grooves in the aluminium channels, put in the appropriate amount of rivets, seal it up and the job's done. Well, it's a little after dawn. It's day five or day six now of foul weather. It's um, been stormy windy with squally freezing showers coming over every half an hour or so. And I haven't been able to do much to the machine. But um, I'm out here this morning making the most of it before the weather packs in again. I'm just gluing some more checker plate to the side. There's no point in putting a whole panel on because I'm going to be cutting several holes in this thing with the doorway and the uh, pantry hatch. So why waste the aluminium? The lids are going to be made from something else. What I'm doing is putting a contact adhesive. It's a construction adhesive for metal, plastics, glass, timber. Uh, it's a, a use-all adhesive. But one of the tricks is to put it on, squidge the two pieces together, pull it off again, and then walk away until it's dry to the touch. As you can see, no glue's coming off on my fingers. This is dry to the touch. It's called a contact adhesive. We've got splodges here, splodges here. I'm just going to put this in place. line it up and that's it it's on I just need to give it a good squeeze out to make sure that it's up tight and that's going nowhere And that's the way you do it. You'll see on the rest of the side, I've also done in the automotive vinyl wrap, only the parts that are going to need it. This is the lid for the pantry. That's going to be made out of checker plate. This is the door. That's also going to be made out of checker plate. So there's no point in doing those. This area here, I explained earlier, slide out kitchen. There will be a sink and a stove that disappear into a cavity. This checker plate that I've fitted is really, really thin. It's, it's decorative only. It's 1.2 millimeters or 18 gauge. And I've been cutting it with a combination of tin snips, bench shears, and a cutting disc. It's imperative that you match the panels because it has a pattern that repeats. You've got to watch how it repeats and make a nice job of it. One of the things I've got to do is put the floor in after the walls are up. So that means that I've got to have a nice close fit around the edge, but it also means that I've got to clear the rivets at the bottom of the wall. So I'm going to be cutting an eighth of an inch, three millimeters, off the bottom skin only, so that when I attach these channels around the outside, They'll be angled slightly in at the bottom, so they'll clear the rivets 
and it will go in nice and snug and tight and then I can seal around the edge once the floor is bonded down to the chassis. Now's a good time to show you a couple of little um, tricks that are important when working with this composite poly panel. One is when you need to do a diagonal cut and the saw blade won't go down that deep to go through something this big on this angle, you need to cut it with a wire. Now the wire to use, I hope this is going to focus, the wire is braided wire it's about three millimeters, one eighth of an inch in diameter. It's cheap as chips. You will go through it because it rubs on the steel panels on either side and frays and breaks after a couple of uses. But um, it's the quickest way of doing it and it doesn't leave a mess with all the polystyrene beads because the cut is so thin. And the other thing that is very important when you're working with this paneling is whenever you're going to assemble anything that is load-bearing like a floor or a mezzanine or in this case a sleeping platform the rails that fits into on either side it's not enough just to rivet them to the side it needs to be thoroughly bonded and riveted to both sides and then when that's hardened the panel needs to be bonded and riveted into the rail with rivets every four inches 100 millimeter intervals um, if you do that you'll end up with something that has the wooden equivalent of a four inch joist which is nearly as good as a real floor Now these two extrusions have both been roughed up with the wire brush on the angle grinder so they've got a really aggressive grip on the back here and I've rubbed down with sandpaper the two strips on the wall where it's going to attach as well. I don't mind if a bit of glue squidges out because if it hardens off for about four hours you can just peel that excess off. But here's something I always like to do and that is rub the two together to make sure that you've got 100% coverage. right out to the edges. And then you offer these pieces up to the wall, transfer the glue onto the wall, and take it off again. Now we've transferred the glue onto the walls as well got a good coverage there I'll let that glue tack off and then reapply it and hit it with some rivets and I will have that sleeping platform in before the end of the day
It takes a while to do, but it's so worth doing because it adds so much strength to the whole structure. It's lovely stuff this. This is the one piece hinge, if you can imagine such a thing. It's a co-extruded plastic. It has very hard durable plastic facings for mounting onto the bodywork and it has a highly flexible urethane moving part that's co-extruded through the same die. Two types of plastic, both extruded at the same time and they become one. Um, I've never seen it fail. There may be cheaper versions that do, but uh, this stuff's 70 bucks a length. This is about half a length I've got here. And I've found it very durable. I've been using it for years. The best thing is, it's 100% waterproof because it's one piece. When you're using it, it's imperative to rough up the surface. I've been over this with the electric wire brush on the angle grinder which gives it a good key and I've done the same on the flange of the very very hard plastic believe me it needs it now I will be using a urethane adhesive and rivets every 100 millimeters I do that on all my hinges even the light duty doors they all get the same treatment and I've never had a door drop off yet you're back you could have hung around for a while and given me a hand I've had to do this by myself <laughs> but then again most of what I do I do by myself um, I'm used to this when I'm putting the doors on the back of my big trailers I have to do exactly the same thing this is actually not as big a challenge as what I'm used to so the first thing I'll do is put it in place as I have drill some pilot holes to get me started to make the job easier then I'll take it down put the sealant on it put it back up again get a few rivets in then drill the rest of the holes it's probably not the perfect way but it works for me so I've pilot drilled the hinge gives me a chance to get about three done on each side Just adjust it a wee way, I might be able to get. Yep, I can get the glue in there without pulling it down again. Well it's springtime here, so it never rains all day. We get 10 minutes of this and 15 minutes of that for at least a month here. And then the whole garden bursts into life 
and summer's on the doorstep. So we can't begrudge a few rain showers. Best thing is, by the time I get this thing finished, the weather will have itself in order. And you and I are going to go and take in the beaches of Northland. We're going to do some surf casting. We'll collect some uh, shellfish, do a bit of camping. And I'll show you all the tricks and all the ins and outs of this thing because by then I'll have all the gadgets and gizmos in here. Last one. Yep. Dun 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 dun. We've got a door. And here comes the rain. Put the camera away. Now we need to catch. I just had a thought. I haven't explained to you guys what my plans are for this. It's, it's not just a door, it's not just an opening hatch. <laughs> I've deliberated about this for days, maybe even weeks. This is what allows me to make the sleeping area person-sized. At the moment, the trailer is built as short as possible to make it tow well on tight bush tracks. For sleeping in, I've got to extend the rear end by 20 inches. Um, I've toyed with a pop-out, toyed with canvas, a sort of a, a fold-out base with a canvas bubble that folds in when you put it away. I've toyed with something that hinges at the top and has a solid bin type of arrangement so as you lift it up the sides come out with it and you have to put up with a slightly curved floor the pop-out idea which was going to be this panel looking like a door but not actually hinging at the top the whole thing was going to slide out parallel and come out with sides top bottom that was going to be the way I was going to go but if I'm not parked perfectly level and rain comes onto the roof it could run back through into the top and end up running around the sides and you end up with a wet patch on your mattress nobody likes that so the idea I've come up with after weeks of de deliberation is this lid hinges open inside it has hinges on three sides. Those hinges allow panels which are stored flat against the door to fold down. Side, side, rear. They fold down, they lock in the corners and seal. Then under the mattress in here I have a separate board that slips into a channel around the bottom and that provides me with a solid cubicle that I can drop the mattress into and lengthen the sleeping area. No chance of leaks. This will be on a slight lean like that so that the water will run off. These sides will be underneath the edges so that any rainwater will drip off the sides. No risk of it getting inside. No way rain is going to come back up and through the labyrinth of seals and joins in the bottom. I think I've got it sorted. This video has been one of a series that I've put together to inspire you to build your own off-grid, off-road camper. You can do it. Have a look at some of the other videos I've done. You'll see how I made the amazing gullwing door for just on $50. You'll see how I've done the electrics on a real shoestring budget and saved some parts from landfill. You'll even see what's in the box.
I've handpicked for you one or two videos that are going to be appearing on the screen in just a moment. Have a look at those, and when you've got a little way down the track, show me how your build's going. I'd love to see.